Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with knife purveyor, designer, and lifer Austin Jackson of Sea Reisner Cutlery. Like so many of us, Austin's grandpa was the one who sparked and stoked his love of pocket knives. But in his case, that spark launched him into a lifetime pursuit of buying, selling, trading, and ultimately designing great pocket knives. I've recently gone down a C. Reisner cutlery rabbit hole with the Ohio River Jack and the new Lake Champlain Barlow, uh, two traditional slip joint knives of modern construction. And I think it's the beginning of a very fruitful obsession. We'll talk all about traditional pocket knives and Austin's life in knives. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share the show uh, with like-minded individuals, fellow travelers, uh, as the communists would say. And as always, uh, you can check out uh, us on Patreon, get extras in the interview section, uh, which is, I think, my favorite uh, my favorite extra. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scan the QR code on your screen. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Austin, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, when I was uh, learning about you and, and reading on the about section of the website, mm -hmm. I saw that you are a, a former U.S. Uh, Marine. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. first of all, thank you for your service. Oh, as thank always. you. I appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. And, uh, and in this family, <clears throat> um, we, ha we have a number of Marines uh, on my wife's oh, side. Good. And uh, yeah, so I have a special <laughs> affinity uh, for y'all. And, and also, I have found uh, that on this show, we have so many uh, former Marines making mm -hmm. knives. Wow. It's huge. There's a bunch. So why do you think that is? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just um, you know, having knives in the military and... Uh, once they got out, you know, the passion is still there and they love it and uh, they just make their own now, I guess. <laughs> you know, um, I've come to the um, idea that, um, well, <clears throat> Marines will frequently, um, you know, it's sort of a humble brag that they're mm -hmm. like uh, sort of uh, down in the dirt and, and a little bit right. <laughs> uh, you know, MacGyvers, you know, so you can yes. do anything with a knife. I could That's see right. I could see that being a. Uh, being a cause well something mm -hmm. kind of interesting uh there, there's the marine corps and the navy connection obviously mm -hmm. um and your grandfather who i mentioned in the intro is the guy who got you into knives and mm -hmm. he was oh. now famously in the navy mm -hmm. um tell me about clarence reisner and uh, <laughs> who he was and and how he led to where you are yes oh yeah so uh my grandpa um so he was born in kentucky just uh I grew up in a, a small family. He was the oldest sibling of, I think, seven. And he was always the, the person that he had to be involved in something. He had to either whittle, he had to have a hobby. And then, of course, uh, when he began whittling, he found his love for pocket knives. And then from there, it just uh, just exploded. And he first started like dealing with case. Um, let's see, German eye brand, which moved into Shat Morgan, Queen Cutlery, Queen City, all that. And it just, he just found an extreme love and passion for it. And um, he started making my own collection before I was even, even born. So I still have those knives over here in the corner here. And I, uh, I love them. You know, it's just uh, something that obviously I eventually grew into, uh, you know, have a strong passion for and uh, love for and of course, the, the bond I had with my grandfather was absolutely incredible. And unfortunately, he passed in 2016. But what he left me is uh, absolutely incredible. And I'm just so thankful. Uh, I I was uh, lucky enough to know all four of my grandparents mm -hmm. into my 20s. And uh, uh, yeah, that is a connection to the past, not only just to the past, but to your past. Yes. That is, uh, if, if you can get it, it's invaluable. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, man, a lot of questions, but, uh, so he <laughs> right. served in the Navy, um, yep. and, uh, the, your newest 
design, the Lake Champlain Barlow, yes. is named after the ship he served on. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, Grandpa, like I said, grew up in eastern or uh, uh, middle middle to eastern Kentucky. So he didn't have a lot of money. His family didn't have a lot of money. So upon graduating high school, he enrolled in or enlisted in the Navy um, to earn a college education. So he served his four years in the United States Navy. And during those four years, he served on uh, USS Lake Champlain CB-39. And during that time, he served in the Korean War. So he he visited just multiple uh, different uh, countries and uh, oceans. And just hearing his stories growing up, it was just so fascinating to me. So I thought, you know, what a perfect example for, to, for me to design a larger style Barlow and to name it after the Lake Champlain CB-39. Uh, Barlow makes sense because mm -hmm. it's a working knife. hundred uh, percent. Yep. And, and that's the, you know, the purpose of mm -hmm. that, uh, oh, yeah. long, um, bolster there. And, yep. Oh, you have the, I got the, uh, saw cut sheep's foot. <sighs> so this is something I've never seen. Uh, 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 I have never seen on a um, knife, this titanium saw cut, obviously mm -hmm. uh, mimicking the saw cut of a bone. Um, of a bone handle oh man yep. that is nice all right all right, all right. I, we're gonna get to this we're gonna talk more about your own all designs right. but i need to get uh a little more background here mm -hmm. uh with c reisner cutlery and your grandfather's love yeah. it started as you said out of whittling which is pretty cool yeah uh, mm -hmm. well what was he whittling what kind of stuff Making i have no food? idea i mean that, that's probably a great question for mom i think he was uh whittling like just little uh wooden uh, animals i'm sure right. knowing him and like I said, that just turned into a love that he found for pocket knives and he started going to knife shows. There's a, there, or there was a big knife show um, here. I live in Dayton, Ohio, and it's called Washington Courthouse. And that was like perfect for anybody from Kentucky, Indiana, obviously Ohio. And that's where he kind of established himself as a knife dealer and uh, just took it from there. That's pretty cool. My parents mm -hmm. incidentally live halfway between you and Cleveland. That, uh, that's right. Yeah, I remember you saying that. That's yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. And I, I grew up there. And uh, yeah. so uh, really, the when the Ohio River Jack came out, I was like, it perked mm -hmm. up my ears. Hmm? Yep. Um, uh, great, great state. I love Ohio. Yes. Uh, but yes, so so the this um, uh, obviously the whittling kind of went by the wayside. It really mm -hmm. became about the knives and he's going to knife shows and yep trading and buying and selling like is that is that how this company starts i would say so 100 percent. yeah he uh like i say he started uh dealing with case knives uh bulldog knives uh fighting rooster kissing crane uh some of the very old school uh german yeah. knives and then he started uh making his indian head knives with german eye brand and really like i said german eye brand led into him getting uh, fam familiar with like Shatton Morgan knives, Queen Cutlery, Queen City, which uh, I mean, I'll, I'm not sure how much you know about um, Queen Cutlery in Titusville, Pennsylvania, where obviously GC is now. But uh, yeah, he just fell in love with with everything up there and um, just took it. Uh, I want to I want to find out more about Queen Cutlery. I have mm -hmm. one Queen knife. Uh, but first, so your grandpa was uh, kind of doing what you're doing, OEMing knives. <laughs> Very much so. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. I didn't know that. So mm -hmm. do you, do you have examples uh, of those old knives that he made and designed? I do. Uh, they're on the website. They're, they're in the other room. I should probably have, have got them, but yeah, they're on the website. If you just go to the website and I'll look up Indian head knives. Um, most of them are like four bladed small congresses, three and a quarter, three and a half inch uh, closed. But um, I'm trying to think what else he had some trappers that he had made in the Indian head pattern. Uh, let's see. I think that was about it. Now the Indian head is that referring to mm -hmm. the shield on the handle? Yes, correct. Okay. Yep, yep. Just okay. like the the kissing crane, you know, it's two kissing cranes, uh, yeah. bulldog. Um, trying to think what else. There's one that's called an owl head. Uh, yeah, just like I said, those old school German uh, trademarks. Okay, so uh, that that's uh, connecting some dots that that are mm -hmm. uh, I don't know even more uh, interesting to me that uh, because. Uh, I guess in this, in the slip joint, they call it a special factory run, but it's basically yeah, yeah. like having, uh, you know, sort of this very uh, current 
Um, I'm going to say trend, but that might sound like it's impermanent. I think it's a permanent thing. We have a whole community of knife lovers who have discovered if they can raise the funds, they can have knives that they want to make uh, oh, yeah. made. Um, sure, and, pretty much. and that's very exciting to me. Um, mm -hmm. And doesn't mean that everyone's a great designer, but it means that you have a chance to see something that you design, yes. um, you know, uh, come to fruition. Yep. But it's interesting 100%. to think that it's been happening for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you think back to the 1900s, um, even like the late 1800s, you know, the factories designing their own Barlow's, their own little, uh, I mean, you look at a old queen Barlow compared to a, like a case Barlow or uh, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, it, what I'm trying to say is factories have their own little touch. They put like, they like to put on their designs and it really just makes that design stand out. And obviously from, if they make a Barlow, they can make a trapper and then they can make, uh, they, they can just continue on with, with their own little designs. And that's how you make a knife stand out from other brands. So um, from the designs that I know of you and then the, the designs that you have chosen to do exclusives of um, mm -hmm. on your website, traditionalpocketknives.com, which is now like, yeah, I open up my browser and it's kind of like, is this where we're going? And I'm like, <laughs> right. yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, the knives that you've chosen, like the Hedgehog, which you just mm -hmm. uh, dropped in the mail yeah. for me, uh, the exclusive titanium jigged. Um, and and then looking at the Lake Champlain Barlow and the 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 uh, really amazing I love this knife so much uh, yeah. ORJ um, yeah. the walk uh, and talk um, obviously QSP is the OEM on that the walk and talk is honestly in my opinion it's near perfect it it's so good and so from these the, uh, those exclusives and these two knives I'm I'm getting um, yeah wow I'm I'm getting that you like burly work knives um so tell me what what the knives you were loving and collecting before mm -hmm. you even thought to design and have your own made yeah uh the shat morgan mountain man um just a, a large folding knife uh, it just has that large uh, i would say 3.75 maybe somewhere uh four inches closed it's just a knife that you can fully grip and let's say you're cutting you know wood uh cardboard uh let's say you're even meal prepping you know, it's it's a, a knife that even if you get the, the texture wet or the handle wet or it becomes oily, that it's not going to slip out of the hand because you have a firm grip on the handle. And like I said, it's a larger knife, 3.75, four, even four and a quarter closed. And it has that large blade to it, usually like a clip point blade or a sheep's foot blade. And it just it, it makes you really want to use that knife. That's uh, so OK with larger knives um, and larger work knives that are mm -hmm. slip joints um there there comes the thought well if it's this large and i'm going to be using it for work like hard work should it have mm -hmm. a lock um right. yeah. so where do you stand on that I, and and i'm going to preface this by saying i have some viewers you know it's a very polarizing issue and i have some viewers who are like <laughs> right. if i can have a lock why wouldn't i um but yeah. so how how do you if you had to how would you defend the large working knife without a lock I would say if you love that traditional old uh, vintage style of uh, just lifestyle and uh, like shaving razors, for just something that pops up to mind or just that old school look, but you want uh, modern technology, uh, modern blade material, modern uh, screws and back springs. I mean, this is ultimately, um, uh, let's say, a style that grew in the early 1900s to now where you can pretty much get a, a beefed up version of a traditional slip joint um very much so like what a, what a gc is gc is very old school they make traditional pocket knives the old school way but now you look at these modern slip joints like jack wolf um, evan nicolaitis evan nicolaitis with esnix obviously my designs and you got titanium you know full titanium handles M390, just a super strong steel. It's really just incredible where pocket knives, you know, started out from and then obviously where they are now. And even with GC still creating pocket yeah. knives the old school way. Uh, to answer your question, I would say if you like it, like I said, if you love that old school vintage style and it, there's just something about, you know, opening a knife without a thumb stud, without flicking it open, just the old yeah. school way of grabbing it by the nail nick, hearing that walk and then hearing the talk. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's a it's a passion for mine. And 
love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I agree with you. There's a great, you know, uh, people talk a lot about the fidget factor and flippers yes, and totally. bearings, and and that's you know, I'm I'm all on board with that for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I love the two handed fidget too. And yeah. that feeling of, uh, uh, Jared Neve says, grip it and rip it. You know, that feeling is right. like pulling it open. It, yeah. it, it, uh, yeah. Um, I remember so being at uh, knife shows and I don't have a stag knife with me, but like the, the, of course each stag handled knife is different. Yeah. And I just remember like grandpa, like just feeling the stag. I'm like, why are you doing that? I was probably like, I don't know, 11 or 12 at a knife show with him. And he, he just told me, you know, each stag knife is, is just different. So you, you'll have people that will come by the table at a knife show and, and see, you know, maybe that's not the the blade they want. Maybe that's not the handle they want, or I'm sorry, the, the design they want, but they see that beautiful stag and it just stands out. And that's just something that, you know, guys yeah. will fall in love with. And that just goes back to my, my answer of why people carry vintage knives. They see that wood or they see that stag and you just don't see you know, like beautiful, uh, jigged stag on, you know, a, a, a modern knife these days, unless it's coming from GC. Sometimes case can pretty, uh, make a pretty, um, good mm, stag yeah. version of a knife, but it's just very uh, rare these days. When they pay attention, they can make a good, like, I think all mm. of their CV knives tend to be yes. nice. They have a smaller line of them and they tend to pay yeah. more attention to them. Oh yeah. Uh, um, also, uh, in defense of slip joints, uh, to the modern locking knife lover, it's like, how, how are you using your knife? First of all, are you using it that hard that when you use it properly, um, in the proper direction, uh, against that sharp edge that it's, yeah. it's still trying to fold on you. And, and mm -hmm. if not, I would also say, are you turning it around and using the spine, uh, which is not, mm -hmm. you know, advised for that tool. Right. You know, so yeah. like mostly there's not too much that if you're going to if you're going to use a folding knife for it, there's not too mm -hmm. much that a slip joint can handle. I will. Yeah, I mean, there's been a few times where, uh, you know, I pull back on the knife and let me open this up real quick. So I pull back on the knife and the knife, you know, the, the blade will bend a little bit. And, you know, obviously, if you're used to a locking knife, it will kind of surprise you. And if you're not careful, um, you know, the blade will come back to the half stop. But some knives don't have half stops. Uh, I believe this one doesn't. Let's see. Yeah. That, that so this one doesn't have a half stop. It just keeps folding until it closes. So when you have the half stop, it's kind of like a safety uh, design. So that way, let's say you're cutting something, you pull back on it, and it comes to half stop. Then obviously that saves you, uh, you know, the pain from the blade closing on a finger, a knuckle, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, that that GEC 66 mm -hmm. that you keep mm -hmm. picking up. I, I have that yep. very same model in the green micarta. I love it too. That's what uh, this is. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, God. The, and so I was inspired by uh, uh, Apostle P who had that in Gavin mm -hmm. Ebony uh, mm -hmm. back in the day. Yep. I was like, oh, my yep, God. For sure. I love excuse that. The, uh, excuse the excuse uh, the the rust on that. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's authenticity. Sir. So, <laughs> that's what right. do you what do you think of GEC? You're you're making these uh, uh, really stout work knives in a very mm -hmm. modern paradigm. Um, they are they are making pretty stout slip joints in a yes. very old school style. What do you yep. think of them? Yeah, they're they're on top of the game right now. You you think of a, a traditional pocket knife. I mean, you have to think of GEC. Well, I understand Case. You know, Case used to be the 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 brand back in the day. I would say late seventies, early eighties. But um, you know, they've I think they've focused more on quantity over quality. And you have GC that began in 06, and they focus on quality over quantity. And obviously, because of the popularity, um, low supply, high demand. I mean, they they're on the game. They, they're the best out there. I I, I love their. Um... Well, really, they they uh, tap into something that, um, well, that modern you know modern traditionals say like the the ORJ or the mm -hmm. um, Jack Wolf knives don't quite tap into. I mean, you guys have the the designs, but they have the feel of an old tool made in yes. an old way. And I know yeah. they used to use old machines. I don't know if they still do. I don't know if that's tenable. Uh, but um, they, I would say I, I was just up there last or this summer, yeah. I would say about 75% of their machines are newer, but they still have that old school, uh, way of, of making a knife. It's just up to date machinery. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, um, but 
I love their knives for that. Like mm. I, I almost put them on a different shelf uh, than these yeah. just because they tap into a, uh, like where I put my bark rivers, they tap into a nostalgia, right. okay. um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that I really like. And, and um, uh, something, a, another brand that's coming out that I'm very interested in and I don't have any, and I will, I will, I will get one from your website for mm -hmm. sure, but that's Rosecraft. Yeah, I figured uh, you were gonna say that. Yeah. They, they seem to be doing some pretty good stuff. What's what's your yeah. feel? Now I'm asking you, and you're a purveyor, and I'm asking you from the purveyor's point of view, but you're mm -hmm. also a designer, and I don't mean to, uh, you know, ask you to dish on your quote unquote <laughs> competition, but no, you're good. Uh, uh, so where do you, where do you what do you feel about Rosecraft? Yeah, uh, I love Rosecraft. Rosecraft is the perfect example of, I would say good to high quality and still at a reasonable price you have them for i think 42.99 is my cheapest one and uh the the most expensive i think is 54.99 the new clinch river swayback uh so i mean the fact that you can get uh, i would say a, a modern traditional knife uh and bone handle um i mean i i love it it's uh it's been a great brand i started carrying uh, Rosecraft, I think in February, and obviously it's it's moved up to one of my best brands. So it's uh, I love it. <laughs> I've been eyeing up that uh, French broad, Jack. I, mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I just like saying French broad. Hey, that's yeah. right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, but that that's a that's a beauty, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I think something that really distinguishes them. I'm not. I got to be yeah. totally honest. I'm not very fond, or or I I should say I'm not compelled by their flippers and their modern knives. Yeah, I'm not either. No. They, their slip joints just oh man they they mm -hmm. the the thing i like about some of their uh work like especially the i'm not sure what it's called it's this little knife with an offset blade and it's it's mm -hmm. it, it looks like it's built by uh it was designed ergonomically first it's kind of an mm -hmm. awkward looking knife uh, mm -hmm. and that's something i like i've never seen that that pattern before but also yeah. that they use the natural materials uh, i'm a yeah. sucker for um bone covers and yep. um the dyeing that you can get mm -hmm. and the beautiful colors that's one reason that i like case is that like yep. you said they went uh they went from quality to collectability in my and, and that yep. and that means quantity but yep. but in that recipe they they have um really nailed dyeing bone and getting beautiful results with that yes um, but you don't have to get a case to get beautifully dyed bone and you don't mm -hmm. have to get a GEC and try and like do that competition. Right. I right. feel like Rosecraft has that. Yeah. And that's kind of what I, 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 so Andy Armstrong is obviously the, he's not the owner, but he's, he's the main guy behind Rosecraft and in talking with him, that, that was part of his, his strategy was to just offer a high quality traditional, like I said, modern slip joint, but in, you know, natural materials as far as dyed bone um, I think he had a, maybe he, had, he hasn't had a, a wood version yet. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's in route or, you know, on the, on the, on the way. So, uh, yeah, like what he's doing with, uh, Rosecraft is, is good. And it's, a uh, it's a, an affordable option if you can't get your hands on a GC or you don't want to mess around with case and, uh, like a bear sun quality. It's just like, it, you know, the case, the quality of the case, the quality of bear and sun, it's just not as good as what obviously a gc or what these uh new rosecrafts are baron son you don't hear much about them um yeah, and, they're, and they're very quiet mm -hmm. yeah they're in alabama and and they yeah. produce their their knives there and i I, mm -hmm. I i wish they weren't so quiet because uh yes. oftentimes you'll hear people lament that there's no nothing happening in america no manufacturing well there is mm -hmm. you know uh, maybe you know maybe maybe to um please the knife community they have to make some changes but uh i i hope they do because i'm rooting mm -hmm. for them anyone and sons i like that and that's just right. like you're a family <laughs> business yes. uh that's that's uh well so mm -hmm. for you and for c reisner cutlery uh, knives and knife designs mm -hmm. um do you have any aim towards using natural materials like wood and bone and uh, are there special challenges uh, in using those materials yeah, I would say so. So um, obviously, I, I listened to your uh, conversation with Ben, uh, a good friend of mine, obviously a good friend of you, yours with uh, Jack Wolf Knives, Ben Belkin. And like uh, he, he summed it up perfectly with you know, the humidity going from, let's say, the West Coast to the East Coast, 
going from Arizona to Ohio, like say during the summer, you just don't know how like Gavin Ebony you know, would, would, would do or Coca Bolo. Um, you, you just don't know how, if it's going to shrink, if it's going to expand. And some of these rose crafts, I shipped them to a guy in, I think he's in Arizona or, or Utah. And he let his clinch river orange bone, the, the first version release of that. He let his clinch river sway back sit in the car mm. uh, during the day. And it was obviously pretty hot out there. 110. I, I don't know. And by the end of the day, that bone had swelled so much that you could see like in between the bone and the liner. So that's just, that's, that's a perfect example of wow. you know, what heat or what, you know, weather can do to a natural, uh, handle material. You know, I think of, um, well, I think of diamond wood or whatever that stabilized particle oh, yeah. board is that they use on buck. Yeah. I know and, exactly what you're talking about. Uh, and, 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 you know, you imagine the woods stabilized woods or, or, mm -hmm. or particle wood or whatever, um, all of those kind of things being infused, you know, going into the vacuum and having, um, uh, epoxy drawn through all the pores mm -hmm. and, and that, and that that's going to turn in basically into a piece of plastic, but yeah. that's not so because in the spaces in between, you still have natural cells and who knows, it sounds like there's still moisture trapped in those cells and you leave yeah. it in a, you know, in an oven, which is what a car in Arizona is. Uh, mm -hmm. And pretty much <laughs> it's going to yeah. expand. That's amazing because I was, yeah. I've only seen uh scale material contract and kind of mm -hmm. wither. So that's, yeah. that's pretty amazing. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like to at least uh, try a few. Uh, I would like to try Gabin Ebony. I think that's how you say, it, or maybe it's Gabin Ebony and then definitely Coco Bolo here in the future on a, on a knife. But uh, like I said, it's just, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to, take that risk of making you know, 150, 200 versions. And then uh, they, they start shrinking or they start cracking out the pens and uh, it's just a big risk. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm ready to, to make that move yet. All right. Well, speaking of big risks, let's talk mm -hmm. about your jumping into um, the actual designing and OEMing mm -hmm. of a, of a knife. Okay. We'll talk about the Ohio river Jack and you came out with, three single bladed versions and i think what two double bladed versions is that right yes. or one okay yep. that's correct yep um so there's a big risk first of all in the multi-bladed mm -hmm. that's an that's an interesting <laughs> yeah. um but but just to d lay out the money and make a knife and so tell us mm -hmm. about the decision to go into doing that and then what yeah. designing it was like so I sell Finch Knives, uh, Finch Knife Company. They're based in Kansas. And they got me uh, started talking with QSP. And QSP uh, said they were absolutely interested in making uh, some OEM knives for me. And so I sat down, uh, kind of went over my few patterns of, of, of Shatt & Morgan knives that I really like. And I kind of just drew out this Ohio River Jack. It's, it's kind of like a coffin, squared, uh, squared um, bolstered ends and... I designed the two blade version first and the two blade version was the spear point in Warncliffe. And you know, the more I got to thinking about it, you know, I was like, well, how about I go ahead and just make single blade versions, obviously with the, the spear point with the uh, Warncliffe, there you go with the, the sheep's foot. And I tell you what, it was uh, one uh, heck of a learning experience. Uh, first of all, talking to, to, or commuting, communicating back and forth with, with QSP but not only just communicating, but making sure they understand what people look for in slip joints, in modern or traditional uh, pocket knives, the walk and talk, the, the flushness between the handle materials, uh, the transitions from handle materials to the bolsters, to the, the liners. I mean, it was quite a, quite a learning experience, I'd say, for, for me and QSP that flat spring on the half stop, mm -hmm. which is, yep. uh, totally, um, not ceremonial, but it's not mm -hmm. structural. It's, it's just there to know that yep. they, that they care. Right. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it took me from, I think the beginning, it was near the, the end of 2020 and I didn't release the, the ORJs until September of 2022. So that wow. tells you just how much or how long, you know, that, that took. Because they sent a few prototypes to begin with, and I did not like them. There was 
miscommunication and I had to like take pictures of what I wanted to, I wanted them to make because I, I obviously wasn't explaining it clearly or it, it was just a miscommunication uh, because QSP makes flippers, they make, you know, thumb stud knives and all that. They, they obviously didn't make uh, slip joints. So it took like a year and a half just to finally get some prototypes that I really felt comfortable with. And then well, that third prototype, I was like, all right, these are good to go. Let's go ahead and make some Micarta, make some jigged uh, titanium handles and, you know, let this be my first run. And so far, uh, everybody's from my, from what I've seen, everybody loves the Ohio River Jack. Um, very few complaints and it's been a, an awesome uh, first release. So uh, you mentioned that QSP hadn't made slip joints. So mm -hmm. did you, you know, I just mentioned before that I ordered your exclusive titanium mm -hmm. jig uh, uh, hedgehog. hedgehog did, yep, right here. did your conversations, oh God, I can't wait to get that thing. <laughs> it's so cool. I, I've, I've watched mm -hmm. so many videos about that. Knife. But it's, anyway. It feels so good in the hand, that uh, hollow grind, full hollow grind blade. Super thin. Yeah. It's like a straight razor pretty much. So w did your conversations with QSP about the Ohio River Jack mm -hmm. um, uh, inspire them to do designs, their own designs, like the yeah. Hedgehog? Yeah, I mean, not, not officially, right? I mean, they, they they didn't, like, you know, ask my permission or anything. Of course, they don't have to. Yeah. But I think, let me hold the Ohio River Jack up and let me hold the, uh, like, you can obviously see the yeah. similarity of these two knives, right? I mean, let's yeah. let's just be honest. Which, you know, I, I'm glad, you know, if they want to start making their own designs and, you know, use everything I taught them, then, you know, more power to them. <laughs> and uh, as long as they're making quality, quality slip joints and, you know, have at it, go for it. Yeah, they they do make some damn good knives. They do. Uh, yeah. uh, the Penguin, that's just a, a winner. Yeah, I know that was awesome. a, that's an exclusive you do with the, with mm -hmm. the Jig Titanium and the, yep. and the, yeah, that's a, that's a great knife. As a matter of fact, uh, my mom and dad were just visiting, uh, here from ohio and every time my dad comes i give him a, a knife um because he's i've turned him into a knife junkie you know and uh, <laughs> and uh he um he wanted something small this time and i i gave him uh the, that mini qsp penguin he loves mm -hmm. that thing it's a perfect yeah uh so with the ohio river jack tell me about the double bladed versions um yeah. uh, and what i mean by that is what inspired it uh, inspired mm -hmm. them because you've, you've see them less in modern productions. Yeah. Uh, I think lion steel does a couple and mm -hmm. they're usually alcohol based. Like here's a way to, to crack <laughs> right. into a beer. Um, right. but so tell me about the design process and your decisions, mm -hmm. uh, decision going into making the double ORJ. So when grandpa carried German eye brand knives, they had a large sod buster and grandpa sold just thousands and thousands of them monthly. And I asked grandpa, I was like, well, you know, why are these knives selling so well other than or better than the others? And he said, you know, farmers out in Texas, out west, um, down in the south, they love using that big style, large sod buster blade. So I was creating the Ohio River Jack and I'm like, you know, I want that same effect. I want people to mm -hmm. hold this knife, use it out on the farm, use it in the shops and just feel confident um, without the knife, you know, like feeling light or cheap or like it's going to break in their hand. And so that was part of my design. I wanted to absolutely like just build a, uh, a tank of a knife and have two full length blades, obviously the spear point blade and the Warren cliff blade, something that you have with the spear point, you have that fat belly. And with that Warren cliff, you can make your precision cuts. And uh, it's just been an absolute incredible knife. The only complaint I've had is obviously the knife is thick. I think it's, uh, very much close to an inch uh, thick, but people also have loved that because they can get a full grip on it and they don't have to worry about the knife slipping in their hands. If they're out in the farm that are, uh, you know, oil or water or, you know, whatever kind of a uh, liquid that gets on the knife. Yeah. Especially with the uh, uh, micarta you use yeah. on the Ohio river Jack. I really like the micarta on this one. Yes. Yeah, um, me too. But yeah, that's, that's the feeling I get. You pick up that, that double bladed, um, Ohio River Jack and and it is a jack so you're not like attempting mm. to nestle them in a weird not in a weird way but in a in a thinning way you know how yes. um uh so when you grip that in your hand it feels really mm. 
it feels really good. And yeah, even you, you, you just want to start cutting stuff with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, even, even with the um, added contour of the secondary blade, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that can feel weird, but it doesn't in this case. And I think it's because the, the width, like I said, you know, you've yeah. got two distinct um, blade wells there and they're separated by a liner, right? I do have one over mm -hmm. here on yep. loan. Um, yep. I should have brought it over. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the whole, I, I knew it immediately. I was like, okay, so the big, a big bellied spear point mm -hmm. and, and paired perfectly with a, with a precision point straight edge Warren cliff. Yep. Um, to me, that knife is a belt is a belt carry knife. That's like a, get a, 100%. a little pouch yeah. and yeah, I wish thinking back now, I wish I would have like either developed some kind of a slip with that, uh, either with like a pocket clip or something, but, um, yeah, maybe maybe here in the future. We'll see. Yeah, but you do offer uh, other other. Um, you do have leather goods, leather slips, mm -hmm. and stuff on. Yes, I have a on bunch your, yeah. on your site. I actually, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Kevin Duty. I love his <laughs> leather. Yes, he just made this for me. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, he's yeah. getting into the uh, the leather the leather game, and I think he's doing a good job. You know, Beautiful I think he's uh, he's onto something. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so yeah, I, I I look to expand my leather goods here. You can see uh, a mm -hmm. number of different slip options. I love yep. that. I think that's part of what people love. Oh, also leather, um, leather just EDC trays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Excuse River me. Lovick, uh, the owner of Sage Grouse Leather. Oh, that's one hundred percent handmade, hand dyed, hand tooled, and obviously he's very uh, artistic because I mean his work is just purely beautiful. Uh, I want to talk about another exclusive uh, because Jim had it up on screen and I know that mm -hmm. these are coming out uh, this, this week. And um, well, uh, when this plays, they will already have been out for a few days, but you have cool. a new exclusive hedgehog <laughs> coming out. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Let's talk about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, obviously the uh, jig tie um, hedgehog has sold very well. Let me, let me go and show it again. And uh, so I met Andy, the owner of camo carbon. Uh, he lives out in California. I met him at the blade show, uh, two blade shows ago. And I was like, just, just talking with them. And then I could just kind of have the idea of, well, you know, how about I just make a large run of these camo carbon, uh, full hollow ground, hollow ground, um, hedgehogs. And we'll, we'll see, we'll see if they sell. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you never know, but yeah, it's uh 145, uh, you know, free shipping. So I think, uh, with that price point in through 90, hollow grind, um, you know, some beautiful color options. I think they'll sell pretty well. Yeah. It looks like you got a bunch of color options here. Yep. What? Nine, yep. 10, uh, yep. 10. Yep. Wow. I think I'll have to go for that purple camo carbon. There you go. That That's is, my favorite. That, that and uh, Halloween night. I just, I love it. Oh, <laughs> uh, that must be black and orange, right? Yep. Yep. Black, orange, and uh, white. There's some white in there. How long, how long does it take? So once, once you mm -hmm. get the, uh, the thought we're going to do this exclusive, I know it sounds yeah. like you, uh, you met uh, the gentleman from camo carbon yep. two years ago. So it, mm -hmm. it took, it took that long, but yeah. in terms of, um, say you decide that you, you want to do a knife and exclusive, uh, of an existing design like the hedgehog, yeah. um, obviously you have a relationship with QSP, but how does that, mm -hmm. how does that work? So, um, if, if QSP, ha uh, if it's QSP's design, um, I should say, and I want to throw different handles on it, like fat carbon, camo carbon, or jig tie, micarta, it takes maybe three, four months because they already have that cutout for that design. They already have that design in CAD and everything. Now, if it's a design that I made and, you know, I made in CAD, I shipped it or I emailed over, they have to look at it, obviously make it to where their machines can make the product. And then they have to send that back to me. Why well, I have to review the changes they made and make sure it's still in line with what the product of which I want. And that that's where it takes, like I said, anywhere from six months to a year to a year and a half. But if it's exclusively uh, QSP's uh, design, then it, it just takes maybe three, four months at the, at the uh, oh. max. Oh, wow. That's, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. You just basically, um, send them the materials if it's something mm -hmm. particular like this and yep. and uh and, and i guess probably having a, a working relationship like like that's an interesting thing to observe with yeah. other friends of mine who have started uh knife companies you know through oem and you can see them pick up steam you can see some of them 
uh, picking up steam. They have a regular relationship. It seems like uh, with a, oh, uh, Ben Ben's a perfect example. You know, he has exactly. with a monthly yeah. release, and yeah. and uh, you know, no one knows who OEMs his <laughs> stuff, but mm -hmm. which is which yeah. is great. I love that. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm always guessing someone new. I'm like, well, maybe. That's right. Uh, I, but, I have an idea, but uh, I'll yeah. keep it to myself. <laughs> I have an idea too, but yeah. You know, it, it's just that it's just an mm -hmm. idea. Um, yep. But uh, that that idea of getting on someone's um, regular production schedule almost mm -hmm. seems like uh, the the way to go. It's like success yep. breeding success. Uh, what have, what have you found in running a a, a, a knife website selling mm -hmm. knives and then and then kind of crossing over into the um, designing and selling your own knives what what has that been like uh stress <laughs> a lot of stress uh so i made grandpa uh his websites um there was three different websites that grandpa had back in 2012 2013 when he passed um i, I told him i was going to combine those three websites into one which is now traditional and you know i started selling maybe three four brands over the net over the last five years i picked up you know maybe another seven or eight brands um, all quality brands. I mean, my followers know me. They they know I carry high quality knives and they trust me. But um, yeah, it's been obviously running uh, an e-commerce website, uh, a business. And now the fact that I'm designing my knives, it's just an added uh, added stress or added level to uh, to it. But also I love the challenge. Now, I've, I wasn't getting bored with selling knives, but it's, it's just very... Uh, routine like you know you get a new brand in you market it you sell it new brand in you market you sell it and with designing knives it's a whole new ball game and i love the challenge and it's been stressful it's been aggravating but it's been all obviously i'm super proud of, of the work i've done and i just i love it and it's like i said it's a it's a challenge and it's awesome <laughs> well you have obviously um when you look at the uh, the companies you deal, you have an exclusive roster, which is nice to see. You look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, I love, uh, I love my smoky mountain knife works. Yes. Uh, definitely. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the mall of, sh of knife shopping, but, <laughs> yep. but I also like going to a place like traditional pocket knives yeah. and seeing an exclusive lineup because it's obvious you vetted each company. And now mm -hmm. basically the work you do has to stand up to those companies you've vetted, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, yeah. What, what goes into choosing a brand? How do you pursue that? And uh, um, are you always on the hunt for a new brand or, or is it someone that comes along that you're like, this is right for this company? I would say uh, 50, 50. First of all, uh, the person behind the brand, you know, who, who are the, who's the person or who are the people behind the brand? If I like them, that's already, you know, a big step in the doorway. Uh, if I don't like them, well then obviously I don't care how good the quality is. If they don't treat their customers, right. Their dealers, right. You know, I move on. But first of all, uh, you know, like I said, person, people behind the brand and quality. Are they making their knives uh, with good quality, good materials? Do they understand fit and finish, walk and talk or and not just walk and talk? That's obviously slip joint related. Mm -hmm. But then I look at. Do they love their own brand? Do they love marketing for their own brand? Because a lot of these knives and you guys, I'm sure you can probably think of two or three. They they're great at make mark. Uh, they're great at making knives they're either not great at marketing or they just don't want to and to me uh somebody like ben belkin with jack wolf knives i mean i fell in love with his designs from when he first made those like 10 instagram posts of like those cad or like 3d drawings and you can just tell ben has that passion with his brand and boom right there like him and i just clicked and I was like, you know what, you know, I, I, I 100% want to be a dealer for you. You know, I love traditional knives. You love traditional knives. You love what you're doing. You love your brand. And I'm all for that. So, yeah, very, so, something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that that mm. makes a huge difference. And I've noticed, um, uh, well, in, in what I do here, I'm meeting people mm -hmm. uh, who, who make knives and who have their brands. You can yeah. really tell. And, and most people, I mean, this is not... Uh, uh, an, an easy road to hoe. It's it's not something yeah. that people go into for a quick buck. So most right. people uh, involved are pretty into it anyway. Or mm -hmm. I've noticed that if they're not, you know, when I talk to Greg Medford, for instance, who I know you yeah. represent, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
he was kind of like, I'm not a knife guy. And I was like, huh? And then I realized, yeah, but he's a, he's a tool and machining and yeah, uh, exactly. he's a, that guy. So basically he's a mm-hmm. knife guy. It's just not, No, I listen to his, uh, his live videos or whatever. And he's, he's very intelligent. He knows, oh, yeah. he knows he understands business. And well, obviously now he understands his knives. He understands the knife market and um, you know, he's, he's doing good. He understands quality and he holds him, his employees to that very, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? High standard. Kind High of. standard. There you go. Yeah. And obviously it shows with his, uh, his products. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, he was one of the first people where I was like, Oh, he didn't start as a total knife nerd. Like I just mm-hmm. can't do anything unless I'm making knives, you know, yeah. very interesting uh, dude and a very interesting background. Yes. And, 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 and that is, uh, you know, this is a very interesting field. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of people coming um, out of all these different uh, the service. Yes. And uh, yeah. aerospace, a lot of people. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of what you've seen, you've been in this knife community, this knife world your whole life. How have you mm-hmm. seen things change and um, grow? Yeah, I would say, uh, obviously, very heavily, I've been involved with slip joints growing up. So I, I didn't really get into the modern flippers and and all that um, design, all the designs until about 2016. But just growing up, the slip joint community from, I would say, late nineties to about 2010 was super strong. It, the, the slip joint game was, was on and everybody seemed to carry a slip joint, at least in, obviously in my world. And I, it kind of fell off, uh, 2011, 2012, 13. I'm not really sure why. I think, uh, I think the, the flippers were getting better and more interesting and they're easier to use. You can just flip open the knife. You know, a lot of people don't want three blades on a, on a, you know, GC 66, uh, stockman. And you're seeing within the last three to four years with Evan Nicolaitis, with Esnix, Ben, with Jack Wolf Knives, myself, a few others, we're keeping like what we were talking about earlier. We're, we're keeping that vintage old school style of pattern or pocket knives, but we're throwing in modern materials and it really seems to be hitting and people love them. So. So uh, from your perspective, as someone who likes slip joints in the mm-hmm. old style, what yes. do you think of like the Civivis and these uh, very mm-hmm. slick looking things uh, <laughs> or, or double detent not, look, uh, yeah. these, that these whippersnappers are carrying? Yeah, it's it's not my thing. It's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I carry a few Civivi. Um, honestly, I was just kind of testing it out on the website just to see what they would do. Um, they, they've sold, you know, fairly well for me, but. You know, Rosecraft obviously is one of my top brands. GC is one of top, my top brands. I know my customers, they want the, tr- the traditional uh, slip joint, modern slip joint style. Um, but within the last few years, I've been carrying Finch knives, um, mm-hmm. QSPs, uh, flipper versions, and um, starting to build a, a little I don't know, road down that world. But uh, I still love my, my slip joints. And, you know, that's obviously my, my best selling knives. Finch is a, a a great fit for traditional yeah. pocket knives. 100%. If if, yeah. if you want to bring the flipper into it, a it's yes, it's uh, that all of their designs are so mm-hmm. um, inspired by traditional knives, and then mm-hmm. QSP quality. Yep. There's a story um, behind every knife, and they relate it to either yeah. where they grew up at, or or you know something a hobby that they're passionate for, like fishing or something. And yeah, uh, yeah, they're they're great guys behind uh, Finch. And that's a uh, very smart marketing, uh, like Ben mm-hmm. too, you know, yeah. kind of coming up with a whole package, a whole story, mm-hmm. you know, that's how you sell organic milk. You know, our yes. cows yeah. are, you know, listen to Mozart, that's right. um, <laughs> the history of, uh, from my perspective, uh, what you were just talking about, uh, slip joints falling off around t- 2012. Yeah. Now I'm trying to remember to me, they came, they, they, they came out, like when GEC became big. Um, and I think that was probably for me, like 2010, I know they had been around a little bit before that. So for me, that was like, that was, th- that was when I started paying attention. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I had slip joints from my grandpa when I was little, uh, but I got way into the, into survival knives and, yep. uh, commando knives and, oh, yeah. um, you know, tactical folders and stuff yep. that when, um, for me, when, when, uh, people that I watch on YouTube started getting GECs like um, mm-hmm. Apostle P back in the day yeah. when he was, yeah, he was a big one. 
uh, I was like, whoa, these are great. And they remind me of my grandpa in this time that I didn't live in that I wish I did or, you know, right. that strange nostalgia, strange nostalgia you can have for a period you didn't experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, for me, that's when it happened. So so it's kind of an inverse uh, for you. It was very strong in the nine, you know, when in yeah. and then you saw it drop off because there yeah. was this more introduction of this other kind of knife. Yeah, well, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, Shat Morgan. They kind of closed their doors um, around 20, 2011, 2012. Uh, another family bought Shat Morgan or Queen Cutlery at the time, and they, they tried to make their run at it. And so I think that had a, probably a lot to play mm -hmm. um, with, with you know, how I felt the knife market was going. But like you said, GC, you know, he started, uh, Bill Howard, the owner of GC, started in 06, left Shat Morgan or Queen Cutlery. Um, just moved right down the road, opened his own factory with GC. And uh, yeah, I'd say you know, you're, you're right. As far as 2010, 11, 12, that's when the GC game really started to appear um, heavily on the market. And you know, the quality was there and uh, a lot of people just fell in love with it. And yeah. In, in terms of your collection, um, mm -hmm. what, tell me about it. It sounds like it's got to be sprawling, man. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh, um, a ton of German eye brand knives. <clears throat> like I said, uh, I got Indian head knives, Kissing Crane, Bulldogs, uh, um, a lot of Shat Morgan knives, all of Grandpa's SFO, so special factory mm -hmm. orders or special factory runs with uh, Queen and Shat Morgan. I have, and honestly, those 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 are the knives that that mean the most to me, but. Yeah, a ton of Shat Morgans, Queens. I've started my own collection of GCs now. Um, obviously, my own designs. Um, trying to think what else. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Bef before you had your own designs, because I, mm -hmm. I, I presume you carry them. You have to make sure, you know, or if you're in a prototyping phase, you, I'm sure you always have something of yours, mm -hmm. whether it's an exclusive or your own design on you. But before you were doing that, or when you're not carrying your own thing, what is what is the first knife you reach for? Ooh, uh, QSP Penguin. <laughs> right on. Yeah. What boy? Yeah. That's a that's an endorsement, man. Yeah, Especially right. <laughs> with such a huge uh, huge collection. Yeah. Um. I mean, a QSP Penguin. The 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 the, the Penguin Plus is uh, one I've been carrying the last year or so. Um. If I had to pick one knife for the rest of my life. Uh, probably this uh, GC 66. I love it. You know, you got three different blades on it, clip point, sheep's foot, and uh, like a spay blade. And all those, uh, those three blades can be used for different kind of cutting and all that. So then does, uh, well, knowing that and being loving that knife so much, does mm -hmm. that inspire you to uh, make a, uh, that's not a dog leg. It's sort of a, or, or, mm -hmm. or make it a, a, uh, a stockman or do something yeah. like that. I know we were talking about the double bladed knives, but yes. triple bladed is different. Triple three blades on one spring right. or, or two springs, I guess. <laughs> two springs. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, right now I'm working with QSP on something very similar. I don't, I don't want to uh, spoil it, but yeah. it's, uh, you know, the, the ORJ, the two bladed ORJ was, was simple compared to, compared to what I'm trying to work on now and trying to get three blades in there and, and letting QSP know, like, obviously we can't have blade rub. The blades can't hit each other, nice. but you got, you only have so much space that you can fit all those three blades on or in. Uh, and it's, uh, like I said, going back to, uh, you know, it, it takes a while communication, prototyping and all that. And, uh, yeah, it's, we'll, we'll it, get there. We'll get it, there. It seems like, well, like once you do get there, since it's mm -hmm. all, uh, existing in the digital world and then yeah. being produced through, um, you know, machinery mm -hmm. once it's finally all the, cause I'm, I am making assumptions of that, that it's about nestling all the blades in a small spot and yes. how you're going to figure yeah. that once it's, it's figured out though, it'll be rep replicable mm -hmm. more easily than, than yeah. GEC for instance, Yes, uh, which right. I bet is a maddening process. That's why you don't see mm -hmm. too many triple bladed oh, yeah. stockmans coming out. No, I mean, you think of the last time that GC made a three blade. Um, well, I guess they they just made one, but prior to that, I mean, they hadn't made one, I think, until or since, uh, gosh, I would say early summer of 2022. So hmm. I think, yeah, you know, this is just me me thinking, but obviously they're they're fairly difficult to make, and uh, I think Bill Howard just 
likes making his one blade, two blade knives, and obviously they sell really well and yeah. they're quick to make and they sell they sell quick. So I, I would say the single bladed knives are probably I mean, those mm -hmm. are always the ones that are hardest to get from from yeah. my perspective. Yeah. Um, especially a 15, single bladed 15, forget about <laughs> it. <laughs> yes, right. Um, so how do you feel about uh since you're a traditional guy, uh, how do you feel about fixed blade knives? Any interest or any um, um yeah, I've been following following uh, Montana Knife Company. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. them or not. I've been following them the last uh, four or five months, and it's interesting. More so, I've been following them because you know, they also have their website on Shopify. They hold uh, releases very similar to uh, how, to how I do it with a date, time, release, a countdown, um, email marketing, all that. And slowly, I've just found a, a respect for not only fixed blades, but the designs to where they can be utilized for like hunting mm -hmm. or for on the farm. And obviously if you go to Montana knife company, you can just see that his designs are made to be used and he has the experience. How should I put this? He has the experience behind the designs to where he knows that they'll be used and they will sell out pretty quick. Right. Right. Now, is that a, uh, uh, I'm not necessarily saying that company. I don't want to put your feet to the fire, but is that a sort of company that you would expand traditional pocket knives with, and or 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 is that yeah. uh, going against brand? Uh, yeah, yeah, pro probably, probably not. I, yeah, I, I just no, I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it is called traditional pocket knives, so right, yeah, <laughs> yes. So I could see, but uh, I, I do find it interesting because uh, Ben, um, on the release of, I think it was the second run of the Viper, uh, mm -hmm. or, or the um, laid back, the laid back. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He 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 challenged people to only carry a uh, a slip joint, and a slip joint. <laughs> and you know I love fixed blades, so I was like, can I carry a fixed blade too? And he's like, yeah, that's like old school yeah. enough. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, some uh, people love carrying fixed blades. Um. I, I sell very few, uh, but I, I released GC fixed blades yesterday and oh, they sold out. So really? obviously they're popular and people love them. So yeah, those are uh, those are rare birds too. The uh, yes. those fixed blades. So I'm not surprised. And I think mm -hmm. they did a run of steak knives not too long ago, yeah. which I thought was kind of interesting yeah. too. Yeah. So, uh, two years ago, they had a whole bunch of steak knives just at the factory, and I told uh, Joan May, the, a worker out there, I was like, I'll take them all. And so for the last three years i mean i i bought I, I would say close to 500 or 600 of those little steak knives and i mean they've been selling really well they, they just kind of trickle out the door every month and uh, it's just been one of those knives where you know, 30 40 50 dollar knife and people love them uh so uh as we wrap here i, I here's a question i have um just in terms of you the business model of of yeah. um traditional pocket knives and that is um you know, I follow a bunch and I've spoken to a number of um, uh, custom slip joint makers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, are those people that you would represent? And, and um, you know, I'm, not, I'm just curious if you have any interest in in going down that realm mm -hmm. or if you're more of a or down that road or if you're more of a yeah. production. Yeah. Uh, any, any, anything really. Uh, production knives are obviously um, a thing of mine, but. Uh, I've talked to uh, Mike Moran, um, Evan Nicolaitis. They're all custom makers. And I'm talking like the, the designs they make, the, the quality is just absolutely beautiful. And um, yeah, I, I would love to sell one of their knives. But, you know, I, I, I'm always 100% honest with them. I, I, so they've they've offered, um, like Evan's offered to uh, sell me a knife or two. And it's like, man, just sell it yourself. You're going to make more profit. And you you put in all that work. I want you to enjoy the profit from that knife, not, not me, you know, it's just, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. That makes, that makes more sense for him and probably more sense for you. If you were to yeah. say, uh, and I, I, I love bird vis knives. I, I think they're just, yes. I talked to him, uh, just through Instagram a year ago, but his designs are beautiful. And are... I, I, I reached out and like, Hey, you know, I'd, I'd love to sell a, a few patterns of yours, but, um, he, he kind of said the same thing. Like, you know, I, I can just kind of sell them myself and yeah. uh, make more from it. I'm like, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the reason I brought him up is 
I, I was just thinking of he was the person I was thinking of when I asked the question initially. But what I was thinking was like it would it would almost make more sense for you to link up with someone like that to do mm -hmm. a uh, an OEM collaboration, <laughs> right? Of, yeah. Than than it would to sell uh, a custom. Yes. Well, okay. So one last question then: What mm -hmm. is the knife that you want to design? That's kind of your uh, your grail that you're not you're not ready for. Oh, that's a great question. Wow. I have a third OEM right now. Uh, prototypes are coming that I'm pretty excited for. That that was kind of hitting it, but I really want to. I think this answers your questions. I really want to continue on the double blade path. The OJ double blade was nice. It's it, like I said, it was a thicker knife, um, two full length blades. But I really, I really want to get into um, like your your secondary. That's your secondary blade. That's a smaller blade. You know, like a you know, cap lifter or a small pin blade, a small pin. spade blade with like a large clip blade. So I really want to start moving away from doing these one bladed, you know, ORJ Lake Champlain um, designs to go into two blades and really just create my own path. Cause like you mentioned, line steel is, is one of them and uh, my Ohio river Jack. And I think that's really, as far as modern slip joints, the two blade versions uh, where the blades at the same end, I, I think it's just, you know, line steel myself. So I really want to move down that path and see where it takes me. Well, no doubt people will follow you down it. Uh, uh, everyone, myself included, seems to love <laughs> the Ohio river Jack and everyone's yes. in awe of the, of the Lake Champlain Barlow oh, yeah. big, sure. incredible knife. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, just because I want to mention it and talk about it again, I can't wait to get my exclusive hedgehog. Yes, uh, I'm excited to see what you think of it. I, I I'm, I'm very excited for this. I mean, super, if you like the super. ORJ, you like the Lake Champlain, you're going to love the, uh, the Hedgehog. Yeah, that's super hollow grind. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited you put a hollow grind grind on this one. Yes. Yeah. Um, yep, for sure. Anyway, Austin, so nice to have you on the mm -hmm. podcast. Very nice to meet you at long last. Yes. Austin Jackson of C. Reisner Cutlery. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you. And uh, seriously, thank you for what you do for the knife community. community and uh, We really appreciate it. And thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Take care, sir. You too, man. Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. Yep, that's pretty much me. Uh, so imagine me with a multi-bladed knife. It's like, what blade do I use uh, when I choose which knife to use? Anyway, there he goes, Austin Jackson of C. Reisner Cutlery. Love what he's doing at Traditional Pocket Knives. Um, if you love traditional pocket knives, that is a website that has to be in your favorites because he's selling uh, some of the coolest stuff, including his own designs. All right. Be sure to join us on Wednesday uh, for the midweek supplemental uh, next Wednesday, that is. And then tomorrow night, uh, Thursday night knives. Uh, actually, tomorrow night I will be in Tejas. I will be on my way to the custom Texas knife show. So uh, that uh, Thursday night knives is up in the air. But thanks for joining us on the Knife Junkie podcast. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.